In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, we come to celebrate this Mass. We first call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to O Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscious dreads, and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. O stupid Galatians, who has bewitched you? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ was publicly portrayed as crucified. I want to learn only this from you. Did you receive the Spirit from the works of the law or from faith in what you heard? Are you so stupid? After beginning with the Spirit, are you now ending with the flesh? Did you experience so many things in vain, if indeed it was in vain? Does then the one who supplies the Spirit to you and works mighty deeds among you, do so from the works of the law or from the faith in what you heard. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, he has come to his people. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, he has come to his people. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies from the hands of all who hate us. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our lives. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people. Alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you, with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Suppose one of you has a friend, 
to whom he goes at midnight and says, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived at my house from a journey, and I have nothing to offer him. And he says in reply from within, Do not bother me. The door has already been locked, and my children and I are already in bed. I cannot get up to give you anything. I tell you, if he does not get up to give him the loaves, because of the friendship, he will get up to give him whatever he needs because of his persistence. And I tell you, ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And the one who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. What father among you would hand his son a snake when he asks for a fish, or hand him a scorpion when he asks for an egg? If you then who are wicked know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more the Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So my brothers and sisters, our, our first reading is, is one of the fun ones. Oh, you stupid Galatians, you know. And I know in, in the seminary sometimes when someone would make a funny or unsensical comment in class or say something that, frankly, I didn't think about, oftentimes we would repeat this line to one another and call each other Galatians. But what is really being said here? Well, first off, the word Galatians. Now, of course, this means the people from Galatia. But there's another meaning here that would have been clearly recognized. Because in Roman culture, in fact, in the etymology of the word Galatians, Galatia actually means barbarian. And so maybe Paul here is doing a play on words. Not just talking to the people of that specific city and province, but play on words, you stupid barbarians. And of course, the word barbarian is someone who babbles and makes no sense. Someone who has no culture. Someone who doesn't live by any principles. And I think here we get a little bit more meaning that St. Paul is addressing people who just babble, who don't have principles, who don't hold fast the culture that they have been given. And of course, the culture that St. Paul is talking about very clearly here is do we believe in Jesus in the faith? Or do we believe in the works of the law? In other words, do we believe in the crucifixion and resurrection of Christ as saving us and transforming us? Or do we believe that the things we do that look holy and seem holy are the things that are saving us? Do we believe that the miracles being done about in us are being done by Jesus? Or do we think it's our credit, our merit, our good works that bring these things apart? Is it we who are powerful, or Jesus who is powerful within us? This is exactly what St. Paul is talking about. And I think for us in our day, do we believe in the transformative power of the Eucharist, of the Mass? Do we believe that God's grace can transform us from the inside out? Or do we think that it's our decisions, it's our good works that make us better? Do we believe that it is Jesus who gives us the wisdom, the perspective, the insights that we have, which will greatly enrich our lives? Or do we think it's because of our education or our intelligence that these things come about? Do we believe that every blessing we have is from the Lord? Every grace we have is from Him? Or do we think it's because of us? Do we believe that children are a blessing from the Lord? Or by the act of parents. How do we see these things? And I think it's very clear that in our world today, there are many people who are getting it wrong. But I'd like to propose that we too get it wrong once in a while. Because it's very easy to be 90% there in the faith. But I think there's always a tinge and a tainting that comes about if we are not discerning, if we're not careful, if we don't look deeper and try to have a comprehensive 100% faith. I think many times we downshift without really even realizing it because we're not looking to realize it. 
And this is where we too are kind of like barbarians, where we kind of forget, we kind of don't pay attention. We lose sight of the principles that we should be holding fast to. And we just kind of do whatever, which, not to be insulting, kind of makes us stupid. And this is where it's very important that we do recognize the Lord in all things. You know, it's very interesting with the youth, and I've been thinking a lot about this last night, and I'm sure I will be today as we prepare for our first religious ed class. And I I really hope we have a good class and a good turnout. But with the kids, it's like they live a life of a buffet of beliefs, where they'll take a few things from the faith, but then they take a bunch of things from the culture, and they try to mash it together, and it doesn't fit together. It doesn't make any sense. I remember once I was with a kid at a a home years back, and he had that ball game where you put the different shaped blocks inside the ball. And him being a boy wasn't really being careful. And after about the third try of not being able to put a block in a spot that he wanted to and rotating a few times, he just started bashing it with another block trying to get it to go in. And I looked at the kid, he was old enough to understand that this wasn't the way you played the game. And I said, this is not the way you play the game. Each block goes in a specific spot. Bashing it isn't going to help. But how often we try to bash faith. We try to bash ourselves to try to get us to live or to act in a way that we're not called to, that we're not made to. How often we try to toe some kind of a line because we think it's better, we think it's nice, we think it's the way we should be. And all we do is bash our own hearts, bash our own minds, bash our own points of view and beliefs. <laughs> How much bashing of these things is going on these days with political views as people try to get 100% behind a candidate when, frankly, it's probably not quite possible. But we can't bash God. And we can't bash our faith because as soon as we do, we become barbarians. We become people without principle, without faith. As soon as we live by nine commandments instead of ten, we've pretty much thrown baby Jesus out with the bathwater and started to really miss what this is all about. What is it all about? Ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. Yes, it's just that simple in faith. But notice that when we ask and seek and knock, Those are all actions we do to encounter a person, not to just get stuff. If we want to just get stuff, we go around the back of the house and just take it. Find the key, open the garage door, and take it. No, we are seeking the Lord. We are asking the Lord. We are knocking to encounter him. We're not just trying to get his stuff. And this is the other issue. People who fall into the works of the law, who downshift thinking that they can make everything happen, are people who just want what they want because they want it and don't think of higher principles, don't think that God is a heavenly Father who truly knows best for us and maybe won't give us what we ask. He'll answer the door, but we may not get what we are seeking. We may not, in a sense, think that it's fruitful to knock because, frankly, we're not looking for the door to open. We're looking for things to pass through the door. In fact, getting what we want, when we want it, how we want it, that's the foundation of all witchcraft, of all satanic worship. This is what it's based on. I want to become the master of my own destiny. I want to become my own God. But frankly, my brothers and sisters, not to be insulting, that's stupid. (laughs) When God has so much planned for us and so much there for us. Had a delightful conversation last night with the family, I tell you the power of retreats. I, I remember this family years ago and not baptized, not much for sacraments, not much for live faith because I never grew up with it. I remember talking to the husband and talking with the wife and many, many what seemed unprofitable visits to their house years ago. And then they were at Mass last weekend and they wanted to meet with me. And they had told me, and I'd asked, you know, you guys married? And they said, yes. And I was all confused. Because I'm like, wait a minute. I I talked with these people years ago. That wasn't the case. Well, met them last night. Turns out they moved to Indiana. Someone invited them to a retreat. They went to another retreat. They got married. Their lives completely changed. 
And when they moved back here, one of the first people they wanted to see was me and to continue that journey. I'm like, oh my goodness. I was laughing with them. I was like, I barely recognized you guys. So I remembered you from years ago. I remembered visiting your house. This is why I asked, where do you live? And you told me a different place than where I remembered you living. And I'm like, maybe I got you confused with someone else. Oh, no, no, Padre. We lived there with the big, with the big living room. Years ago, I used to tease. Remember our bird used to land on your shoulder all the time. I'm like, yeah, I thought that was you. But you're not them anymore. And that's the power of grace when we put away our stupidity and live for the gospel and live for the faith that we have received when we recognize before whose eyes Jesus Christ was publicly portrayed as crucified by the eyes of the church, not by our own eyes. So my brothers and sisters, we celebrate this Mass today. Let us pray that we may put away our stupidity and that we may truly live by the faith that has been handed on to us and that we may never tire of asking, seeking, and knocking because our true motivation in faith is to encounter Christ, not to just get stuff or try to get ahead the way we think we want to. And let's offer our prayers and petitions. Pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop William, all bishops, priests, deacons, all who serve in the church and our communities, that we may live by the true wisdom that Christ has given us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for all the sick and suffering, all those without hope, those who do not believe in God and those who care for them, that they will know Christ's healing touch. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our parish communities, our own families. We pray in a special way today for the start of a religious ed program that the kids may truly come back to the Lord and we may truly pick up where we left off, that they may truly come to know Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Also pray in a special way for all of our catechists, all those who will be volunteering in the religious ed program. We pray that we will have great wisdom and prudence, that we may do things properly and rightly, so that our catechism program may continue. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have died, all those who will die this day, that they will know God's eternal love. Pray in a special way for Franz and Ellie. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for hearing our prayers. Help us to always be more faithful in the way we seek you and encounter you. Help us to see the goal of our faith is relationship in you, that we may truly live by your wisdom, your grace, and your strength, knowing the deep fruits of faith. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to O Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you. And with joy we proclaim, Holy, 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 
Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy. These gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognize in the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse, and with all the saints, 
on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen, grace to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, to whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace, so Lord, be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. to you as well. Let us pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you, Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who power both the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. And just a reminder, we do have adoration here at St. Louis from 3.30 to 7.30. There's just as much work to be done here as there is down in St. Bernard's religious ed. So we'll be in prayer together. God bless all of you.